Just like when Apple introduced the first iPhone making larger iPads obsolete, GPD has introduced the Micro PC 2, which makes me look at a regular size laptop and go, wow, something that finally makes my hands look big. For those of you who weren't sure, that was a joke. The iPad came after the iPhone. As with their first generation Micro PC, GPD's goal here is simple, to create the smallest and yet fully featured laptop computer possible. And when I say fully featured, I mean, this thing has better IO than some freaking full-size laptops. Over on the right, we've got a 10 gigabit per second USB type A power button with a fingerprint sensor, as well as a speaker grill. On the back, we've got two and a half gig networking, HDMI 2.1, another 10 gig USB type A, two 10 gig USB type C's, and a micro SD slot. And finally over on the left, a headphone jack, microphone port, and another stereo speaker. At the bottom, they've got plenty of venting for the new copper fin cooling solution for the Intel processor N250 CPU. Whatever that is, it's four cores, four threads, up to 3.8 gigahertz and operates at TDPs between six and 15 watts. So I am expecting suitably adequate performance, but nothing particularly remarkable, especially when it comes to gaming. Even though GPD does claim you can play AAA games, uh, we're gonna get to that later. For now, let's finish off the unboxing. We've got completely empty envelope. Wow, it can contain whatever your imagination wants it to. Also in the box is a pretty decently sized 45 watt power brick and a USB-C to USB-C cable. Not an especially long one, so hopefully your outlet is very close to where you intend to use your computer, especially because we found that the included 27 watt hour battery does not give you the most amazing battery life. Let's plug it in. I actually cannot get the power cord to my jack. <laughs> with the plug right here. Thankfully, we're using our magnetic cable management so I can easily move it up. There we go. And solved. Realistically though, a device like this is not about ultimate battery life or ultimate performance or even ultimate usability. It's about flexibility and being able to get something done in an emergency. And that's somewhere that I think the Micro PC2 is going to absolutely shine. The overall specs, not that bad. It's got 16 gigs of LPDDR5 memory, 512 gigs of M.2 storage, including the ability to put a full-sized, double-sided M.2 drive in it, so you can have up to eight terabytes of storage in here, albeit only at Gen 3 speeds. And the display. It's actually pretty darn impressive. It's 1920 by 1080 and reaches a peak brightness of 500 nits, making it actually quite usable. And <laughs> back to the theme of flexibility, quite flexible as well. The hinge opens up just over 180 degrees. Not sure if that was the intention. And da, 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 rotates around so you can use it in tablet mode as well. It'll be one of the thickest tablets you've used in some time, but it is a tablet nonetheless. Now, you might've noticed that it ships with Windows 11, specifically with Windows 11 Pro. That's because the Micro PC2 is realistically not intended mostly for home users, it's for professionals. So you're gonna want support for things like BitLocker, Hyper-V, Windows Sandbox, Active Directory, and more. But they don't assume your OS preferences and they boast full support for various Linux distros as well. Fully understanding that the kind of sysadmin that might wanna be able to get some work done on the fly on their little keyboard and their pocket-sized device, might use Arch, by the way. Uh, speaking of being pocket-sized, I guess now's as good a time as any to discover if it will fit in the pocket of our cargo pants from LTTstore.com. Okay, well, not the phone pocket. Whoa, whoa, oh. Too bad GPD already has a product called the Pocket. Otherwise, they could have called this the GPD Pocket. Man, they really f***ed that up, didn't they? Before we do some more usability stuff and open it up, I should tell you about our sponsor. Thanks to you, Green, for sponsoring this video. Cloud storage is typically thought of as either difficult or expensive. With a Ugreen NAS, it doesn't have to be either. Their DH4300 Plus has storage space of up to 120 terabytes, a high-speed 2.5 gig network port, an album assistant to help organize your photos with the power of AI, and a user-friendly app to manage everything from. 
It's even backed with a built-in security manager that supports real-time virus scanning. Check it out today using our link in the description. That's where we put them. All right, what are the odds this will just come apart nicely and it won't be a hassle? Do so you think it's just gonna be these four screws I can see? There's gonna be nothing under the rubber feet? Nothing under the rubber feet. You sure? So sure. Wow, it was that easy. Access to the M.2 slot, just like that. And it's totally true. You can put in anything you, wow. So they went and put what appears to be thermal compound on the Wi-Fi chip, but then they just put a piece of plastic on it? Is that a cooler? No, no, it's just a sticker. Yeah, it's metal, okay, cool. So that's just to make sure that your SSD doesn't short out on it. Okay, you know what, I approve. Is there actually enough clearance for, oh yeah, yeah, you could have a double-sided SSD in this thing. That's awesome. There's our 27 watt hour battery. Mm -hmm. Cool, let's close it up. Oh God, I just broke the screw off. Uh, is it just a standard? Oh, it's in there. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, this is like f sword. Um, that's fine, it'll run. Can I get some captain tape? Captain. I'll get it. What makes captain tape special? Uh, it's really sticky. It's not like a, like a gooey kind of sticky, like it's a very tacky yeah. sticky. Uh-huh. Okay, there, fixed. Hey, it still works. That's always a good sign. Now let's talk about how it works. GPD has all kinds of ideas for this. The Y-axis can be rotated counterclockwise and folded back to create a three-dimensional view. The Y-axis. Perhaps this? What does three-dimensional view mean? I assume tent mode. Oh, like this. From their notes also, after withstanding 100,000 cycles of mechanical arm testing, including sustained rotation, flipping, and inversion, it achieves a durability rate of 99.3%. The screen flips up to 180 degrees for a bird's eye view perspective. I've never heard this called bird's eye view perspective, but I think I see where they're going with it. Ah, 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 I'm a bird. Let's give the keyboard a shot. It's not really intended for two hand typing. I think you could, but you should not. It's really not faster than typing with your thumbs. And if you look at the ergonomics of the rest of the input devices, it's clear that it's intended to be used in this kind of orientation. And the touchpad with the three button layout here, actually very usable. I have seen a couple folks online complaining that they're not big fans of this layout. I strongly disagree. Dude, flipping, kind of love it actually. Hmm, scrolling. Oh buddy, middle click. So middle click, but be careful not to click on anything that is hyperlinked. <laughs> Nice. Since we're connected to the internet and I clearly don't have the two and a half gig networking plugged in, it's got Wi-Fi 6 as well as Bluetooth 5.2. So clearly whatever the Intel processor, processor N250, it's clearly a little on the older side. I will mention that the keyboard is backlit and uses honestly a fairly sensible, almost standard layout that is immediately intuitive for me to get around with all of the most essential shortcuts. So screen brightness, volume control, and uh, function access to the F keys, which if you're using this as like a sysadmin or something like that is pretty much essential. You've gotta have all the keys that are on a standard keyboard. How bright is this backlight though? Ah, yes two different brightnesses, extremely dim and slightly less extremely dim. Though to be fair, it is definitely usable if you're you know, in a dark server room or something, which by the way, is more of a thing. They're actually turning out the lights in data centers to save power. The housing is made of ABS uh, with a Rockwell hardness rating of R109. I never said the display was seven inches for instance. Wait, does it have a webcam? You will not be conference calling on this, but that's okay because the real work gets done in the command line. Oh, there's a more expensive one that comes with an i3 N300. 
Again, whatever the fuck that is. What it isn't is high performance. This thing got absolutely crushinated by an Asus Chromebook that we tested it against. I don't even know what CPU that thing had in it is, but whatever it is, it's in a Chromebook, so it's obviously not that good. There was one other thing with regards to performance and battery life, and that is that while it does have switchable power profiles, you have to go into the BIOS to do it like a caveman. Oh God, you'd think they'd at least put it somewhere convenient. You'd think. Yeah. Okay, it's at 15 watts. AAA games. How about Cyberpunk play? Oh, I can hear that fan kicking in. The mouse is so big compared to it. I know, right? How fun is that? Need a smaller mouse. <laughs> Your fingers could cover half the keyboard. <laughs> no, if, as long as I can reach my crouch button, my jump, and my WASD, I'm gold. Oh my God, this is taking so long to load. Hey, there we go. <laughs> That is more input latency than I would expect on cellular data, game streaming from a data center like across the country. This is, man, I'm not even out in the city right now. This is freaking awful. I wouldn't have thought it possible to experience some motion sickness on a screen this small, but I think I've got some. Oh, is motion blur on? Yeah, hi, okay. That's definitely not helping. A glorious 15 FPS at the lowest settings in a AAA game. They're technically not wrong. It does run. What if we try to run something more esportsy? Maybe this is doable. Man, that fan though. <coughs> to be clear, it's actually not that bad. All right, it's actually got a pretty okay tone. It's just, you know, it's a small device and that's what happens. Oh, there's updates, there's driver updates. That was the problem. We didn't have all the driver updates, Bell. It will probably run at so many more FPS. While we're waiting for this to install, why don't we check out the speakers? YouTube. Huh, my expectations were extremely low and it exceeded them. Not by a ton. Harsh and completely lacking in bass, but reasonably loud and uh, Usable, very usable. So good job. It's obviously not a touchscreen, is it? Oh, did I not mention it's a touchscreen? Yeah, it's definitely a touchscreen. Sorry. So you could you could do this if you wanted. Wow. Oh my God. Did Counter Strike crash? Oh, I shouldn't have touched the touchscreen. Way to go, Andrew. Classic Irish move. Uh, okay. I couldn't even kill the chicken before a bot took me out. Okay. Oh, whoa, 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 here we go, here we go. Oh, 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 these hitches though. Hitches be crazy, yo. Good stereo imaging. No, he took my kill. Yeah, let's go! That was quick. Yeah, got him. It was a bot, unfortunately, so that doesn't count. Let's go! Oh, another bot, damn it. Come on, come on. Rage quit. Rage quit this short circuit. Subscribe to Short Circuit. You don't do an emulator? No, maybe you could play emulated games, but I'm not in the mood anymore. Fine, I'll play an emulated game. I was gonna say, people are gonna be mad now you brought it up. They coaxed me back with the promise of better performance in emulators. Fine, don't bet on me. Fortunately, he does not know how to block low. Nice. Well, this runs great. So you can play lots of PlayStation 2 games. As long as you bring a controller with you that is <laughs> the size of your entire computer. It starts at $590 and you should subscribe to Short Circuit. And cut.